Hello, my name is Sarah Rubel, and I'm a professor of religion and the faculty director of assessment here at Gustavus Adolphus College. Today in this short video, I'm going to walk you through how and why we do assessment here at Gustavus. In a certain sense, assessment is pretty simple. We want to identify what students should know and be able to do, the assignments and activities that will allow them to demonstrate what they know and what they're able to do, and then the things that we can do as faculty to help them learn better. And that's it. Well, kind of. Certainly, that's the kind of assessment that teachers have long done. Anytime you have students do a classroom discussion and you try to gauge their learning or ask them to do an informal writing assignment to see if they understand a concept or use an end of the semester assignment to do summative assessment, you're doing assessment. It's nothing new. Teachers have done it for a very, very long time. But there is something new or newish. Systematic assessment. This is assessment that moves simply from what we do in courses to looking at what happens in departments and programs and the institution as a whole. It means aggregating data and using that evidence at the department, program, and institutional levels. It means filling out reports and sending them to an assessment director. And this is where we really go from assessment is something teachers have done from a very long time to, oh my gosh, it's the end of the semester and I can't remember which report I'm supposed to fill out. What I'm going to try and do today is help you understand both types of assessment together. So, simply at Gustavus, how do we think about this? Well, we think of assessment at Gustavus as on three levels. The institutional level, the department and program level, which we think of in two buckets, departments and interdisciplinary programs and then general education, and assessment at the course level. It kind of makes a diamond. I'm going to start with the institutional assessment level, the top level. We at Gustavus have four student learning outcomes at the institutional level. We also have a preamble to those four outcomes. There's a longer story here, but to suffice to say that what we decided as an institution is that we would have four institutional outcomes that we would assess regularly. But we didn't want to say that those were the only things we cared about in terms of student learning and habits and dispositions and skills. That we wanted to name things, that other things that we wanted students to be able to do and habits we wanted them to have. And those are in the preamble. We can certainly assess things that are in the preamble, but we've committed to assessing the things in the four outcomes on a regular basis. We assess institutional outcomes by bringing together collections of data from across the college. We bring together survey data, particularly national surveys that we use, assessment from the academic side from our courses and our departments and programs, as well as assessment from other divisions like student life and other student facing offices. We don't do a lot of assessment at the institutional level all on its own meaning you probably won't be asked at Gustavus to do something that is only for institutional assessment, other than maybe being asked to publicize a survey that we want students to take. And that's because we believe that we know the most about student learning when we look at where it happens, which is in courses and departments and programs. So we focus our assessment on the level where we think we're gonna best be able to get data about what students know and are able to do. And then we feed up that data in aggregated form to the institutional outcomes. So this is where you get really involved, the department level and of course the course level. Let's go to the department level. We think of department and program assessment in two buckets at Gustavus. The first is the bucket of departments and interdisciplinary programs. So here we're talking about things like biology and history and gender, women, and sexuality studies. And this type of assessment happens this way. Departments and interdisciplinary programs create their own student learning outcomes, usually between three and five for a department or program. They develop their own evaluation tools, usually rubrics, in order to look at student work. They usually assess one to two outcomes a year, and then they 
fill out a department or program, or interdisciplinary program assessment report for the assessment director. We also ask departments and interdisciplinary programs to have what we call a program assessment liaison or a PAL in order to coordinate this assessment at the department and in departments and interdisciplinary programs. You and bucket one. What might you do here? Well, you might be asked to assess student work in your course using a rubric that the department has created, meaning the department would hand you a rubric and while you're doing your own evaluation of a student assignment, you would also gauge how students do against the department rubric. Or your department might ask you to collect student work and either give it to the people in the department who are going to use the rubric to assess the student learning, or you might be asked to be part of a group in your department that assesses student work from across the department against the rubric. And then, of course, you might be asked to implement changes to your course based on what the department has learned in their assessment. So, for example, a department looking at senior theses might decide that what they need to do is work more at the 100 and 200 levels on reading primary sources well. So if you're teaching a 100 or 200 level course, you might be asked to work more on primary source reading with your students. Okay, that was bucket number one. Bucket number two is what we're going to call general education assessment. There's a lot that fits in this bucket and there are long discussions about what's general education and what's a graduation requirement. I like to keep it simple, so we're going to put it all in this bucket. If you're teaching a first term seminar, a challenge seminar, if you're teaching in the Three Crowns program, or you're teaching any of the general education designations, and you can see them there, your course is in this bucket. Now, you might be thinking, particularly if you're new, I don't know if my course has a designation. How in the world would I find out? Ideally, a department chair would tell you, but the world is not ideal. So here are two other ways of finding out. You can go to the course catalog where designations are listed at the end of course descriptions. Or you can go to WebAdvisor and look to see if your course has a designation under general ed approvals. Or again, ask your department chair or feel free to email me. Our general education program has four overarching student learning outcomes, and I'm going to come back to those. But right now I'm going to talk about those specific designations for particular courses. So an example of student learning outcomes for a designation. Here are the two student learning outcomes for arts. Art students will analyze enduring and contemporary questions or challenges through the lens of the arts. Students will create, perform, and communicate about the arts to an audience through written, spoken, and or embodied creative expression. So if you're teaching an arts class, those are the two student learning outcomes that your course should give students an opportunity to demonstrate. Most designations have between two and five outcomes. What we do at the general education level is we give you a rubric that's been created by a group of faculty and ask you to assess usually one outcome per semester based on this rubric. It's a simple rubric. There is one line per outcome. You would use this rubric while you're grading an assignment that you have in the class or evaluating assignment that you have in the class, fill it out, and then fill out the report that you'll get from me. So again, what to do if you're in bucket two? Well, make sure that you're teaching to the student learning outcomes in your designation. You want to look for an email from the assessment director that you'll get before the semester begins telling you which outcome we're going to assess for your designation that semester. You can also find the rubric and the link on the assessment website. But again, I'll give you all, the e all of that information in an email. Okay, one more thing going back to those four overarching general education outcomes. If you're teaching one of the disciplinary designations, arts, human behavior and social institutions, humanities, natural sciences, and theological studies, we also ask that you address the four overarching student learning outcomes. I want to be clear about what that means. Address is not the same thing as assess. 
you won't be asked to assess those four general education student learning outcomes against a rubric. We do that in a challenge seminar because, again, they're the four overarching student learning outcomes for the entire general education program, not just for your course. But we do want students to be addressing those outcomes along the way of their general education. So by address, we mean an activity or an assignment in which you engage at least some aspect or part of each of the general education outcomes. And we ask you to do some kind of activity or assignment, formal or informal, graded or not graded, twice per outcome during the semester. Okay, I can just imagine that some of you are panicking. Don't. Think of it this way. By teaching a disciplinary course, you are addressing outcome one. You can't help it. And probably simply by being a teacher who's not terrible, you're going to address outcome four because students are going to write and speak in your course. So that really means being creative around outcomes two and three, dealing with cultural difference and dealing with ethics. Remember here again that there are multiple ways to do this. If, for example, you're teaching a lab class, talking about why you don't falsify data is talking about ethics. You don't have to put it in the larger paradigm. Other courses in general education will do that. You simply have to address the outcome in a way germane to your course. All right, just a little bit more. We're going to put that all together now. We start this time at the course level, the course that you're teaching. You do your activities and assignments in that course, and they should relate to student learning outcomes in your department or interdisciplinary program. You will get a rubric or a set of SLOs, some kind of evaluation tool from the department or program in, or to look at in your course. If they're looking at the student learning outcome germane to your course, you won't get one every semester um, from your department or program in all likelihood, but occasionally you'll be asked to assess for your department or interdisciplinary program in your course. Or you might be asked to collect student work in order to facilitate a department or interdisciplinary program assessment later on. You also might be teaching in the second bucket, general education, and again, very much the same drill. You'll get a rubric from me about this student learning outcome for that semester. You'll assess student work based on that rubric. It's also possible that you might be asked to implement changes based either on department and interdisciplinary program assessment or general education assessment. And that feeds back down into the course level. And finally, all of that gets fed up into the institutional level where myself, people on the curriculum committee, look at results from departments, from general education, and think about how we're meeting our institutional student learning outcomes. One more example using one of my own courses. Religion 113, Religion in America. It's a course in the religion department and it responds to some SLOs that we've created. So in a given semester, if we're looking at the SLOs related to this course, I might be asked to collect student work. Let's say we're looking at one of our SLOs related to reading primary documents. I'll collect an assignment related to reading primary documents. And then a subcommittee of my department might look at my papers as well as other assignments and activities other department members have done against a rubric we've created. Then we'll meet as a department, discuss the results, and if we see need for changes, we'll implement those changes in our courses. And that's pretty much it then for department and interdisciplinary program assessment for me that semester. Religion America is also a theological studies course, so in a semester I would get a rubric from the assessment director telling me what student learning outcome we're assessing for theological studies. I would take the rubric and I would assess student work using it. I'd fill out my report. And I'd also remember during that semester to address, not assess, the four general education student learning outcomes because my course is a disciplinary course, so I need to address those outcomes. Then, I've done my general education assessment for the semester. Both the religion department assessment and the theological studies assessment will be aggregated into our institutional assessment. 
I will have to do that because I'm the assessment director. You do that. You do your part of that by filling out the reports. Final thoughts. Remember that assessment is really, in essence, a simple process. We identify what students should know and be able to do. We identify assignments and activities that allow students to demonstrate that knowledge. And then we identify changes we can make to help students learn. We might change our courses. We might change sequencing in a department or program. Or at the institutional level, we might find there are barriers systematically that we need to address. All of what we do is aimed at helping students learn. If you have any questions about assessment, from things you can do in your courses to see if students are understanding a particular section or a particular idea or concept, to questions more broadly about how we do assessment at Gustavus or what you're supposed to be doing in the semester, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'm always happy to help. Thanks.